Welcome to the second video series on my channel where we focus on the mathematical concepts behind quadcopter drone control. Today we will finally see how we can optimize or tune the values of the PID controller of a drone, not by the trial and error method, widely used, but through mathematical calculations. Let's get started. In the first video of this series, we developed the transfer functions for the sensor and the motors, while the second video discussed the quadcopter dynamics and the third video focused on the controller. For the yaw dynamics, for example, we saw that the optimal P, I and D values were equal to 2, 12 and 0. In this video, we will mathematically calculate these values using the root locus method. First, we need a mathematical description of the closed loop controller that we have created. This is relatively simple. The output of the system Y is equal to controller C multiplied by the system G, which in turn needs to be multiplied by the system input U minus the sensor dynamics H multiplied again with the system output Y. Now rewrite this equation such that the system output Y is isolated and written in function of the system input U. To determine whether or not the closed loop controller will be stable, you need to determine what the closed loop poles are, simply by determining the value of s for which the denominator of the equation is equal to zero. Now g and h are determined by the physical system and cannot be chosen by u, at least considering the quadcopter design to be fixed, that is. But you have full control over the controller c to stabilize the system. Strictly speaking, it does not even have to be a PID controller. Let's first look at the characteristics of the physical system determined by G and H, for which we have already defined the transfer functions in the first and second video of the series. Now this open loop system contains three poles or values of S for which the denominator becomes zero. When S is equal to zero, when S is equal to minus 33, and finally when S is equal to minus 63. The S-plane is drafted on the screen. When all poles of the open loop system lie in the left half plane, the open loop system will be stable. If any of the poles lie on the unstable right half plane, the open loop system behaves unstable. In this case, all poles lie in the left half plane, except for the pole at zero. This pole at zero makes the system metastable and hence you will need a controller for stabilization. Now to stabilize the system, we need to add a zero near the pole. This means the controller has the form of the equation on screen, where B is a zero that you need to place near the pole and K is a constant. We do not yet know where we need to place B exactly, except that it will be near zero as shown on the screen. In order to make sure that we do not get a steady state error in the response, we will use a controller to put another pole at zero, with the final equation for the controller displayed on the screen. Now the parameters k and b will be calculated with the so-called root locus method. First, let's go back to the open loop system and add our new controller to the equation. This open loop system is a fourth order system, because the power of s in the denominator is 4. Now if we choose b to be close to zero, b will help to cancel out the two poles at zero. This means that the system will behave as a second order system and not as a fourth order system. The step response of a general second order system, which is displayed on the screen, can be characterized by two parameters, the maximal overshoot and the settling time. The settling time is defined as the time at which the response goes to within 2% of the desired value. Let's say that you want the system to settle within half a second with a maximal overshoot of 10% as displayed on the screen. The maximal overshoot requirement can be used to determine the damping ratio epsilon, which is calculated with the equation on screen for a second order system, giving a value of 0.95. The settling time can be related to the damping ratio with the formula on screen, where omega n is the natural frequency of the second order system. By inverting the formula, the natural frequency can be obtained, 
which is equal to 13 radians per second. With the help of the damping ratio and the natural frequency, you can calculate the desired poles of the full system. Let's write only the relevant desirable pole on the figure, because this pole is elemental for the root locus method. The angle condition of the root locus says that the sum of the angles of the open loop poles minus the sum of the angles of the open loop zeros has to be equal to 180 degrees. Remember that the open loop system contained four poles and you want to add a zero at B. Just draw lines between the system poles and zero to the desired pole and highlight the angles. The angle condition then simplifies to the equation on screen. Using basic trigonometry, the angles with the numbers 2 to 5 can be determined with the equations on screen. This allows us to calculate angle 1 as well, and knowledge of this angle enables us to calculate the value for B, leading to a controller with only the value of K still unknown. To determine K, you can use the magnitude condition of the root locus, which says that the product of the length between the desired pole and the system poles divided by the product of the desired poles and the system zeros is equal to the full amplification k global throughout the open loop system. The full amplification k global can easily be determined from the open loop system equations and includes the parameter k as well. Taking the product of all known terms gives a correlation between k global and k that is equal to 10053. Now let's add the lengths on the drawing and use these lengths to rewrite the magnitude condition of the root locus. Using the Pythagoras theorem, all lengths can easily be calculated, which eventually gives a value for k that is equal to 2.4. We now have all the information necessary for our controller, as we know the values for k and b. The controller can be rewritten in a form that you should know by now. This is a PI controller, where 2.4 is the p-value for the yaw rate and 11.3 is the i-value. Since a pi controller is sufficient to control the yaw rate, the value for d is simply zero. Now these are the values with whom you will test the quadcopter drone first. You will tweak these values a bit according to your liking. I ended up with the values 2 and 12, which is very close to the theoretically calculated values. To learn more about the trial and error methods to tune your PID controller, you can watch part 12 of our previous video series. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you like the series. And remember that you can find all tutorials on YouTube and the full drone code on GitHub. The manual which contains all explications is available as well on GitHub if you need some more information. Thanks for watching and see you next time.